Okay. So, so at the background, you do the passes here, the trial paper. So get ready on Monday. Eh? So uh, please, for two hours, we try to focus the same circular motion. Eh? Okay. So this is the word file. So we done with the omega is theta over t. The two formulas, what? Two pi over period and two pi, two pi half, and two pi half. Okay, so angular displacement, angular velocity, you have to know. Then we learn about uh, there's some questions here. You can give a try. Uh, we've done this before. Okay, we go back. Linear speed equals to r omega. Okay, how they got this formula from s equals to r theta. We got this formula. Okay, another formula I haven't mentioned yesterday. The the, the earlier class is the another way of finding the speed is two pi r over t. A circumference divided by the period, you get the again the average speed. Okay, the average speed. So v equals to r omega or v equals to pi r over t will do. Okay. okay. Then we talk about centripetal acceleration. When anything moves in a circular path, it accelerates. Why? There is a continuous change in direction. Therefore, there is a change in velocity. So it accelerates. Right, accelerates that the what do you call the vector diagram shows the changes of v is towards the center of the circle, therefore, it accelerates towards the center, and uh, the derivation comes leads to these two formulas uh -huh. centripetal acceleration of v squared of r, another one r omega squared. Okay, up to here we discussed that day. Okay, so now today going to be centripetal force okay if let's say anything move in a circular path it accelerates towards the center centripetal acceleration what causes acceleration a net force, right? So where's the net force? Net force also towards the center. All right? The net force is equals to ma1. In this case, centripetal acceleration. So the net force should be ma, and the a is v squared over r. So the centri this is called centripetal force. The force makes the object to move in a circular path and accelerate towards the center. We call centripetal force. Okay, this mv squared of r, or you can return as what? mr omega squared. Two formulas. Okay. Yeah, just multiply by mass, you get the centripetal force. Okay. okay. Now we're going to discuss the actual discussion. Yeah. So now we're going to discuss the type of circular movement. We're going to evaluate what goes to the centripetal force for that system. Okay. Okay. So there are many types of system. The ball is whirling. Uh, a pendulum was whirled horizontally on the table. The ball is whirled vertically. Car moving in a curvature. It's a plane view from top view. Okay. A plane maker turning in the air. Earth going around the sun. Car moving in a loop. So these all are type of circular motion. We're going to check what equals to the centripetal force. So we go up first, we go to the easy one first, the first one. Okay. 
So before you check what equals to the centripetal force here, you need to draw the free body diagram for the system. Can you now tell me, use your own knowledge, uh, what are the force acting on the string here? What are the force acting on this string, the pendulum? Uh, centrifugal. It doesn't don't include that. That was we only discussed about the centrifugal. Okay. Centrifugal like outward. So the only force acting is the centrifugal. Okay. So what force acting here? The force up is what the force down is. Eight mg. Then reaction. Then tension to the to the left, right? To the left. Eh? Because we are focusing to the pendulum. For the pendulum, the tension is to the left. Okay, this is the force. Okay, tell me what equals to Fc in this system. Whatever force acting towards the center is contribute to the centripetal force. Whatever force acting towards the center contribute to the center. Centripetal force. Anything like 90 degrees, you resolve it, the component will be zero. You never contribute to the centripetal force. If that force diagonal, then you resolve into the circle and it gives contribute to some centripetal force. In this case, normal and mg, is there any contribute to the centripetal force? No, because it's 90 degrees. So therefore, the tension, uh, tension equals to Fc. So tension equals to mv squared over r. The tension equals to mv squared over r. It means for example, eh, for example, let's say someone like to whirl the the pendulum horizontally. The the, the radius, uh, sorry, the, the yeah, the radius is zero point five meter. And the pendulum mass is uh, 0 0.5 kg. And the, the string has a maximum tension of 1000 Newton. Okay, so now you need to advise, advise the person. You want to whirl it horizontally. You need to advise the person. What speed you can go maximum? If you go beyond that speed, what will happen? The string will snap because the tension can't afford to contribute to the centripetal force. Mm -hmm. So, so you need to advise him. Is it a maximum speed or a minimum speed that the, the system has? It has a certain maximum speed or a minimum speed the system has. Mm -hmm. Maximum means maximum speed means it can't go more than that. Something will happen and snaps. Minimum speed means it can't go lower than that then you can't move in a circular path. In this case, it has a minimum speed or a maximum speed? A maximum speed. Minimum can have anything. Uh, but maximum, uh, there is a limit because you're going to break. So can you find the maximum speed? So how do you find the maximum speed? You have to use this formula. The T max will lead to MB squared B max over R. So you can work out the V max, how much? It's T max times R over M square root. Yeah. So this is your V max. Centripetal force is a type of force required to make an object to move in a circular path. You don't say centripetal force act towards the center. Yeah, it's always towards the center. Uh, but some other force are contributing the centripetal force. What is centripetal force? It's a type of net force. It's a net force. Okay. So it's a name given for the for the force acting towards the center, a label, net force. L last time we not usually tell net force. 
but now for circular motion as a special name centripetal force okay so what is the v max you get here so tension you put t max is 1000 so 1000 times uh, it is R O M, right? Yeah, squared. So what do you get? Thousand times uh, zero point five over zero point five. So you get root of thousand. How much root of thousand? You want root of thousand? Yeah. How much? Thirty one point six meter per second. Yeah. So what is the use of this formula? So if there is any mechanical system using a string or wire which is whirling horizontally, okay, what speed can allow it to turn? You can use this formula to figure out. Okay. It all depends to the how tension, how maximum tension the, the string can have. Okay. So T equals to mv square of R. Okay, so this is a easier one. Okay. In exam, they will ask what type of force contributes to the centripetal force in this system? The tension of the string. Okay. okay now let's we go to the complex one. Uh, the next one. Next one you can understand, you can understand everything in circular motion after that. Okay. So put this. Eh? Okay, next one is this. Okay, we need to always switch this. Okay. So ball on the end of a string being rotated vertically about an axis. Vertically, like you're rolling up and down, eh? up and down. Uh, this is a little complex system because when you roll it up and down. With a constant speed, let's say constant speed, rolling it. Uh, is it tension going to be the same? Where is the tension going to be maximum? At the bottom. The bottom tension going to be maximum. Very good. So you take a bucket of water or take a bucket of water, you hold it up and down, you still feel like the tension is maximum at the bottom. Okay. So let's we come up with the equations. Eh? So here all the equation has been stated. I put it as a point A, B, and C. Eh? Okay, for the point A, what equals to mv squared over r? Okay, point A at the bottom. Eh? What force acting down? Mg. What force acting up? Tension. Okay. What produce mv squared over r? Is the whatever force acting towards the center minus whatever force opposing it. So what is mv squared over r? Tension minus mg is mv squared over r. Okay. So this equation, they make it t as the subject, so you get that mv squared over r plus mg. Okay. At b, what equals to mv squared over r? And B at this position. Mg acting down, tension acting towards the center. So tension only, right? Mg never never help to contribute to the centripetal force at the same time, never oppose centripetal force. It's perfectly 90 degrees down. So tension equals to mv square of R. And the top. Top C, what equals to mv square r? Mg acting down, tension also acting down, so T plus mg. T plus mg equals to mv square of r. Whatever force acting towards the center minus whatever force opposing it is the centripetal force.
Okay. So from this equation, where the tension become maximum at the bottom, right? You see, at T at bottom is what mg plus mv is equal to R. Bring the mg to the other side, so tension is maximum at the bottom. Okay, tension become minimum where at the top. So when you roll it up and down, the tension is varying. Okay. Centripetal force is constant. Weight is constant. Okay, weight is constant. Centripetal force is constant. Now we will be the constant, constant speed. Right? Okay. We very important is your visualization. Imagination is important. Now you tell me. Let's say your friend is holding a string. Okay. With the, the same the, just now. Let's say it's 0 0.5 meter in length, the radius, and the mass is 0 0.5 kilogram. Now you plan to roll it vertically up and down. The string has a tension, maximum tension as 1000 Newton. Okay, the same system we recall back. Okay, one you want to roll it up and down. Now the question is, you need to advise him. So can he, do we have a maximum velocity or not? Is there is a limit for maximum? Can you roll it? Yeah, should have, right? More than that, what will happen? You're going to snap. Okay, so it has a V max. Okay, do it as a V minimum. Why you have, you see there should have a V minimum? If you go lower than that limit, cannot go up. Very good. Can't reach the top. So circular motion won't happen. So in this case, you have V minimum and V maximum. Okay, okay. find out. What is the V minimum, V maximum for this system? Okay, that's, that's the typical power. You understand this V minimum is from how to find? You can understand the entire circular motion. Okay, first, V minimum. We go for V minimum. Huh? To find V minimum, which point do you consider? Very good. The top. Eh? The top point is the most critical point. If you can able to pass the top, it means you can entire circular motion you can experience. Eh? Stop. Very good. V minimum, v minimum. Consider the top point. Eh? The top point. So top point is uh, point C. So T plus mg equals to mv squared over r, okay? Okay, when v is minimum, what becomes zero? Tension, good. Tension, the tension, the lowest tension you can have at the top is zero. Okay, you have greater tension pulling down, you have a tension down, let's say 10 Newton, 5 Newton is okay, but the lowest you can go is zero. If the tension on top is negative, and you calculate you got negative, that means but, uh, uh, what, what he tells is never reached that point. Very good. So, important. Eh? When V is minimum, tension is zero. Please remember this. Please remember these three points. V minimum achieved. Consider the top point. When V is minimum, T is zero. So, Mg equals to M V squared minimum over R. Okay, find the V minimum. So, you get root of Rg. Okay, this is a, one of the famous formula. Eh? They will ask you to derive normally in circular motion. So V minimum is root of RG. So if this is the derivation, maybe it's remarks question. You must tell which point do you consider? You must tell when V minimum what becomes zero. Then you derive the point.
Yes, about this system, how do you advise him? What is V minimum? For this system, V minimum is root of R is 0 0.5 times 9.81. You get minimum per second. How much again? 2.21. Eh? 2.21. Okay, so must advise him that don't go below 2.21. If you go below then 2.21, you can't achieve the top. The halfway you're going to drop. Okay, good. So we're done with V minimum. Okay, now one minute for you. Find the Vmax. Which point do you consider? Bottom. Yeah, it's good. When you worry something, when you go down, that's the point where the tension becomes maximum. Where if you if you have a system which is going up and down, the point where most likely you're going to break is at the bottom because the tension becomes maximum at the bottom. Okay, hook up the Vmax. Vmax. So let me do the Vmax here. Huh? Sorry. So Vmax, Vmax, consider the bottom. Eh? Consider the bottom. So bottom is point A. T we put T max, T max minus mg equals to m b max squared over r. And, and T become max, V max. That's the limit. Okay, you can rearrange this to get a formula for it. But this formula not famous. Uh, v minimum is more famous. They ask in exam. Okay, kind of simple form. Root of RG quite famous. They ask in exam. Okay, so Vmax, how much? Can anyone can calculate for me? What is the Vmax will be for this system? How many meters per second? In point? 31. 31.5. 31.5, eh? 31 is it? Okay. Okay, so this is the difficult system. If you can understand, then the others are see easy. So this system, the guy must oscillate between, the speed must be between uh, 2.21 and 31.5. You can pull it whatever speed you like. No problem with the oscillation, or with the circulation, sorry. More than 31.5, you're going to snap. Less than 2.21, you can't reach the top. Okay. okay, what type of force contribute to the centripetal force for this system? What type of force contribute to the centripetal force for this system? Tension. Yeah, the combination of tension and weight. Eh? weight. Or the gravitational force. Eh? The combination of tension and weight contribute to the centripetal force. Okay. So any circular motion, when they, they show a system, draw the free body diagram, to show all the force, then write what equals to Fc. Whatever force acting towards the center minus whatever force opposing, that's Fc. Okay. Once you got that formula, you can, you can predict everything. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, how do I know what's the Tmax? Uh, Tmax, they will tell you in exam. So in this case, Tmax, I give 1000. If Tmax is not provided, you can't find Vmax. You need to tell Tmax to find the Vmax. Okay. okay, so any question for this part? Okay. So.
Okay, next one. Okay, now, what to, uh, identify what are the cause acting and what it goes to have seen. Okay, look at that. Car moving around a curve. The centripetal force is provided by the frictional force of the tires of the car on the road. Even though the car moving, the force is actually perpendicular to its motion and it's static frictional force. No need to worry about static, which is it's a frictional force. Do you agree frictional force? See the diagram here? It's a plane view, okay, plane view, view from the top. The car, when it makes a turning, the friction is acting towards the center of the surface, uh, between the tire and the road. Okay. What are the forces acting on the car? Difficult to show the two forces acting on the car, the weight and the, sorry, always have to go here. Okay. So the weight is acting into the page, right? Difficult to show. And the normal force is acting out of the page. And uh, the one dominant one is the friction. Friction acting towards the center, always towards the center. Okay. The friction between what? The tire and the road. So what equals to FC? Easy, yeah. So the, the friction is equals provides the centripetal force in this system. Okay. That's why a car with a new tire, you go the same curvature nearby your house, maybe. New tire. Okay. You can move faster. Okay. And the tire, when the tires start to wear, wear off, maybe after two years later, the same curvature, you can't move the same speed as last time. You have to slow down. Why? From this formula, can you explain? Because the new tire, the friction, the maximum friction it can extend is very high. So the speed you can go higher. Okay. And when the friction, the limit of friction drops, the tire wear off, the maximum friction can be sent drops, the speed have to drop. Huh? If you maintain the same speed, what will happen to the car? It start to skip. Okay? Act of nature. The nature, because the friction, let's say the friction uh, contributes, let's say, 1000 Newton. The speed uh, you move, such as the, the friction is 1200 Newton. Okay, the friction needed 1200 Newton, but uh, the, the tire only can provide 1000 Newton. You move with a very high speed. So what the nature will do, you try to increase the radius. Skip, skip until radius get bigger, then okay. Until 1000 Newton, the centimeter force requires only 1000 Newton, then you, you, you start to move in a circular. Okay. So this formula is very useful to check what speed needed eh, for the car, okay? So, yes, here you just put friction equals to mv squared over r. So, no, I don't think so need a one calculation here. Eh? Friction between tire and road provide, provide the centripetal force. Okay. Okay, we go to the next one. Next one is uh, something new. Okay, in this document, uh, the, this formulas which I wrote, you have to rewrite back because it's empty uh, for you to write. Okay, it's already recorded, so you can view on it. Okay, next. This is visualized. A plane moving, tilted, and moving in a circular path at a constant height from the ground. What are the force acting on the plane? I think this diagram tells you that. Yeah. What force acting? So lifting, this is called lifting force. Eh? Lifting force acting uh, perpendicular to the to the wing. Okay. So you have a lifting, let's say this is the plane. Uh, so going in, so this should be your lifting force. This will be your Weight into the page is what? 
thrust out of the page is what? Aerosis. Okay. Into the page is thrust, out of the page is aerosis, weight acting down. Lifting force is always what? It always 90 degrees to the to the to the wing. Eh? So let's say it makes an angle of theta from vertically. What equals to mv squared r? Very good. Eh? The lifting force contributes to the centripetal force. The component, the what which component? The horizontal component of the lifting force. Eh? So the formula will be L sine theta. Yes. L sine theta equals to mv squared r. The horizontal component of the lifting force contributes to the centripetal force of the plane. Okay, because I say the vertical height is constant, the vertical height is constant, h is constant. If h is constant means vertically net force is zero, vertical net force is zero. So what equals to mg? L cos, very good, L cos theta. L cos theta is M. The vertical component of the lifting force balance the weight. Okay, this is something unique. They do the third equation, they try to get the third equation now by dividing the first one divide with the second one. What do you get? L sin theta divided by L cos theta is yeah squared over LG. Yes. This three formula is very important. Let's we analyze from here. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Eh? V squared over. The extension theta. Tangent theta. Tangent. Sine theta or cos theta. Okay. Now let me ask what the, in the past years they asked about this lifting force. Eh? So the R is which R? The R is the the radius of the circle it makes towards the center. And okay, let's see. The pilot want to maintain the same radius, same height, but he want to increase the speed. When he increase the speed without changing the radius of the circle, without changing the height, what will happen to the tilt angle? What will happen to the angle? Increases based on which formula? Which formula is very useful to mention them? Showing that theta increases with the V increases. First and the third one also can be used. Okay, first and third one. Because R and G is constant. So tangent theta increases when V increases. So theta more tilted, right? And the plane want to make more faster, it tilt more. Tilt more to maintain the same radius. Saw so at the movies, eh? more, okay? To make the same radius. Eh? Yes, sir. Is there any, uh, the component? Right, the, uh, no, the, the speed is moving, traveling. Oh, not like the velocity no. for it to maintain. No. The speed is traveling. Uh, the speed and the angle will balance the weight. Okay, now this one question they ask, the very famous one Can the theta become 90? Is it possible for the theta to become 90? 
Why? Yeah. Uh, you lifting force provided due to Bernoulli's principle, right? You all of you learn Bernoulli. So when there is a steep difference in the air flow, you will get a lifting force. Let me the 90 degree, the lifting force actually is not a lifting, it's going to be horizontal. So, so the lifting force will be towards the center of the circle, perfectly. So, is it going to be, can, can make 90 or you not? Know? It's, it's going to move in a circular path, right? But it can maintain circular path, right? Is it? Can it maintain it? Uh, it moved down. Very good, why? But to, can, can it maintain the same circular path at that same height? No. But as you said, it can go down. Huh? Yeah. Why? Why you can't make 90 degrees to maintain that circular path? Which formula? Can you explain that? Because your answer must be technical. We have to tell the formula and explain why now. That's very good. Second one. Huh? The vertical component of the lifting force become zero. So vertically, the force are not balanced. Okay, the L cos theta becomes zero. L cos 90. Cos 90 how much? Zero. Eh? So, so why it can't be 90? So you see, based on L cos theta equals to mg, the vertical component of the lifting force becomes zero. Therefore, vertically the force not balanced. So not possible to make 90. Okay, so what provides centripetal force in this system? What provides the centripetal force for this system? The horizontal component of the lifting force. Okay, the horizontal component of the lifting force provides the centripetal force in this system. Okay. So you need to derive these three formulas. Eh? This is something different because the force is not perfectly vertical or horizontal, it's diagonal. So you can you have to resolve. Okay, last one for today. For this this class. I'll be seeing you later. Okay, yeah, this one. Right what equals to centripetal force. This is easy, right? Earth going around the sun. What are the force acting on the earth? Yeah. The gravitational force. Eh? The gravitational force between the earth and the sun. So the force acting towards the center is the gravitational force eh? between earth and sun. Uh, no other force acting on the earth. No other force. Only force acting on the Earth is the by the Sun. We neglecting all the other gravitational force by other planets. The most dominant one is the Sun gravitational force. So, what equals to Fc? Is the gravitational force between Earth and Sun. Later in A2, you will be learning this gravitational force formula is GMM over R square. Okay, this formula we will learning in gravity later. Okay. The force, gravitational force between Earth and Sun is uh, GMM over R square. G is constant. MM is the mass of the Earth, mass of the Sun. And R is the distance between the center of the sun to the center of the earth. Sun to the center of the earth. Eh? This is your R. Okay. But for time being, what do you need to know? What contribute to the centripetal force for the planet, for earth? The gravitational force between earth and sun. Is contribute to the centripetal force. Okay, so we stop here.
So later we continue. We finish it off. Okay. Yeah. But the R keep changing, so that means that the centrifugal force at each position is not the same. What changing? The R. The R. The R. Ah, yeah. In reality, the parent getting closer and further. Is it? Ah, then the centrifugal force will vary. The gra the the gravity also getting stronger. You get closer. Eh? So the R will change. But the one we are talking, the ideal case, like perfect radius, eh? and this is the force. Okay, so we stop here. So I see you later, eh? 10 o'clock.